the last three, four years, uh, machine learning and AI is basically a new service that uh, me and my colleague deploy in trying to solve uh, customer problems. So we found out that with the help of machine learning uh, models, uh, we are able to get insights on different aspects of the problems that we couldn't do before. We are able to manipulate uh, and work with huge amount of data uh, and different type of data from uh, data sets that are coming from uh, controllers and, and sensors on the shop floor uh, to video cameras and uh, text uh, on the web uh, and accumulating all that data into sensible uh, conclusions or ideas uh, open up a new era for us. Uh, so, so we are still doing, uh, I'm still doing uh, different type of projects uh, on the same way I've done years ago. Uh, but uh, there is a whole line of services that we, me and my colleague introduce to customers that are uh, differently executed. The project are the same, the titles might be the same, but the way we do them uh, is different and the results, in my opinion, are more uh, qualitative. So there are different line or types of projects. Uh, on the supply chain side, I can mention two. One is uh, on procurement, especially high volume commodities that are impacted not just by the way you operate as a company, but also on global uh, trade. Mm -hmm. On inventory management, where we can uh, have uh, more insights and understanding of the way inventory behaves beyond the traditional uh, EOQ or uh, other mod inventory modeling. On the manufacturing side, I can mention uh, at least three different eras. So, so one is for you know, a, lo a lot of the focus of the industry, manufacturing industry is, is on what is called predictive maintenance. Uh, I'm more doing operation excellence or OE enhancement activities, utilizing a different set of uh, data uh, capabilities just to to mention one is video cameras so for example in the food industry you would have existing cameras in most of manufacturing uh, or production lines because of safety and regulatory needs and uh, we could use that data to analyze equipment performance operators performance uh, inventory movement uh, just by using uh, uh, video footprint detection techniques in AI, uh, which in other words, we should have put somebody to just do work sampling. Um, the, big, the other big part is in some industry, uh, equipment setup is very complex. It requires a lot of time. It uh, requires a lot of experience and technical skills. And uh, it usually results with a quite significant scrap rate in the setup time. We are able to use sensors and, and data from controllers 
to basically subscribe setup uh, activities that can decrease setup time uh, by tenfold uh, and reduce dramatically the script, which has a huge impact on flexibility and beside cost, of course, and OE, but flexibility to do setup much more often, which enhance the overall supply chain. So those are just some examples of what we have done in the last three, four years uh, in utilizing AI. And we, we are not programmer, no, we are not, we are, data, we are using data science. We are not uh, putting any code, we just use existing uh, AI applications, which are very strong these days and applying uh, our knowledge and skills, just, just using those. You know, future is not a defined time frame. So I might agree uh, on the statement in tens of years from now, but you know, if I'm looking on Industry 4.0 as a, as a as a theme that was around is around for I don't know five six seven years already, and I'm trying to read and understand the level of adoption of the technologies uh, around it in uh, industries, and I'm more into manufacturing industries. I'm less into finance, less into you know, commerce. Um, but, but the adoption rate, in my opinion, is very slow. So I, I think it will be the same with AI and ML. Um, and you might you might uh, say this is because they are very conservative, or oh, there is not enough money in the industry like you have in financial services, uh, you know, just comparing salaries and profits and things like that. Um, and, and that might be true. So, so I think that um, in the next few years, five to 10 years, I don't see a major drift in what consulting do. When ML, AI will be sort of embedded into Gen AI together where they can replace us, not just in putting presentation together or research uh, the web, but also in, in, in coming up with uh, conclusions or, or, or recommendation, that might be the case, but uh, I see that, I don't see that happening uh, so soon. And, uh, and uh, for me, uh, when I'm, I'm in front of customers and I'm trying to uh, convince them to invest in an AI ML project that has profound benefit beyond the analysis phase. I'll just give you an example. So I have this video camera that is taking a footprint of uh, the production floor every few seconds. And I need that. I cannot, I, I can't shut it down. It's there. Okay, so what do I do with it? And I'm offering the client an opportunity to have a, a real time, uh, 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 analysis, not as a consultant, but as a, an operative operational tool mm -hmm. for operational management with specific KPIs, with specific indicators, alerts, alarms that will give him indication how he can act better today, not tomorrow and in five years today. Yes, there, there is a budget issue, and I'm talking about multi-billion dollar food industry company, okay? Uh, it's, it's not trivial. Until they see that it's working, 
and it's uh, somebody else is doing it and it's common practice the conservativism of the manufacturing industry is so embedded that uh, it will take years so when you say future i assume that if the you know if politics and regulatory uh, won't change and AI will continue to develop the way it is and only for the good part of AI, then it probably will change our role. By the way, I see our role only partially as a, as a, as, as a diagnostics uh, consultant or advisor consultant. Most of my work, if I'm looking at it, is mainly on making things happen, which that won't change. I mean, that won't, uh, AI won't replace us. Somebody still needs to change the culture, change the people behavior and project manage it. Uh, th that uh, won't change. Uh, the analysis phase probably should be much quicker, much faster, much more automated and with much more insight than what we can do. But that will take to me at least five to ten years if not more. I think that for me uh, what changed uh, in the last ten years uh, was in essence the level uh, and capabilities of the clients. So I think clients uh, are much more educated, uh, much more precise in what they would like to see and get. And uh, it elevates, in my opinion, the level of projects both in uh, the way they are executed so the governments uh, in the past we talked a little bit about that the governments of a consulting project is much more robust much more uh, communicative and much better but also the outputs and again i'm talking about my personal experience and uh, not necessarily the whole industry but the fact that there has been for years um, business schools popping uh, uh, sending graduates to to industries uh, high level qualified individuals uh, is is uh, changing and change the way they uh, buy and manage consulting uh, work uh, so in that sense, to me at least, it's a positive uh, trend. Um, I think still there is a lot of personal relationship in buying consulting. Uh, people buy from people, as you say, it's still the, the industry practice, procurement, organization, uh, even if they try to get in the process, at least in my experience, it's still very technical, very transactional. It's the last thing they want to get into, I think, uh, because it's hard maybe to understand. Um, and it's not uh, repetitive, okay? It's not an ongoing procurement process. So it's usually relationship-based. Um, but but uh, that that's uh, has been there for years, and I think in essence it will not probably change dramatically. Uh, um, so I think that's the last ten years. It's mainly the the professionalism of uh, buying and executing. Uh, consulting work has been continuously changing for the good. Um, 
that's also increased the complexity. So things that I have done 20 years ago uh, in, in uh, multiples, again and again and again, which was a cash cow, I don't see them anymore. Uh, I don't see them. Uh, I think the, the, the new line of business on ML and uh, AI, at least for my uh, point of view, is a, an attempt to get there again for a while. But most of the projects are not so repetitive yeah. uh, in essence. Um, for so the future, yeah. you know, they say profit C is for the fools, but uh, <laughs> I think that uh, this trend will probably be, be enhanced by ML and AI and not uh, replace. I see again the level of output that I'm able to provide clients with uh, utilizing those technologies is just elevating a, a, a continuous the, the elevation process of consulting project benefits outcome results and also elevating the client's capabilities because if i'm doing something for them uh, which intrigue is intriguing and and has benefits it will elevate uh, it will uh, uh, increase their desire to have those capabilities in-house and they can build those in-house, which again will elevate their capabilities to manage the business. So I see the trend changing, uh, continuing. I don't see a profound change. And as we said before, we still be people there. So we still need change management there. And uh, they will still need to implement uh, those uh, 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 project and uh, uh, so, so I only see a, a, I don't see a profound change uh, in essence uh, consultant always had came up with ways to utilize tools manual or electronic tools to elevate their uh, business uh, or to create a business and i think ai and ml is a, is a good example of another uh, trend um, i think the industry is much slower in adopting consulting trends or technology trends than consulting them consultant in essence we we make living from change companies don't <laughs>